the Jazz Ranch, cowpokes, cowgirls, hip cats, groovy chicks, and dudes. Welcome to the only ranch where we don't sing country and western songs around the campfire. Just bebop tunes. So eat your heart out, Garth Brooks. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, last week we had this couple show up at the ranch. You know, they were city slickers. And the lady, she had never ridden a horse before. So we asked her, what kind of saddle would you like? Would you prefer a western saddle or an English saddle? And she said, well, well what's the difference? And we said, I told her, well, the western saddle has a horn on it. And she said, well, I don't think I'll need that. There's not much traffic out here, is there? <laughs> she cracked me up. <laughs> and, you know, we have some tough characters around here. You know how the old western movies, they, there was always a guy that said, this town isn't big enough for the two of us, you know. <laughs> well, Luke and Billy the Kid, they say that to each other, you know. And what I say to them is, well, you know, what it should have happened is the, and to avoid, you know, a lot of bloodshed and, and you know, uh, conflict, the cowboy designers and architects should have made bigger towns. Why didn't they just make bigger towns, you know? <laughs> it's pretty obvious, right? Anyway, I have a special video for you this evening on two five ones, how to play them in a practical way, a musical way that'll be interesting for you. And then to apply them to a song. And the song I'm going to play is When Sunny Gets Blue, a great song to learn. And it's going to show you how to use the spread voicings and teach you a drill in two fives and in two five ones. So here we go with the drill, and then I'll play Sunny Gets Blue for you later on. So here we go. Okay, welcome. Now, the two five one exercise in all keys through the cycle of fifths is probably one of the most important exercises that you'll learn for playing popular music and jazz because the 251 progression is used in so many popular songs and in music in general you know it's very basic now, now I want to make it practical and I want to show you how to apply this to a song I mean you no, know, I can apply it to any song that I picked out Sunny Gets Blue because I haven't done that one yet and it's a good one to illustrate the what I would call the one seven one three maneuver in the left hand one seven to one three to one seven now you know when you learn the two five one I'm just playing it with my left hand now uh, in C it's D minor seven to G seven to C major seven that's playing them in, in root block chords in root position so you would invert the five chord this is the two chord in root position you'd invert the five chord there into second inversion so that you have little movement there you just these two notes move down to here like that and then these two bottom notes move down there you see so you have economy of motion so that would be how it would work in block chords left hand uh, down here you see so now what I'm doing is on the one seven one three is I'm taking the middle notes out, these two middle notes, and I'm putting them up in the right hand so that I have the root and the seventh, and that's of course a minor seventh interval, it's a flatted seventh. Um, and then I have the, the third up here, which is a minor third, and then the fifth. So you have root, seventh, and then up an octave, third, fifth. You could call that a tenth, but it's really the third of the chord. So you're spreading it out. You see, you're spreading the block chord out between the two hands and getting a bigger sound than you are with a block chord or with this. You're getting this nice spread. Now, to that I can add a ninth up here. I get a really pretty jazz sounding chord. Now, to go to the five, what happens is the one seven moves into the one three on the five chord and then resolves to the one on the one seven. So you have one seven, one three, one seven. So now you can see what's happening there. To go to the one three, the bass note is going up a fourth. One, two, three, four, and then down a fifth. One, two, three, four, five. You see, so up a fourth, down a fifth. Now that creates the two five one in the bass line movement. 
which is very important. Now this is all bass, these are not inverted chords or uh, inversions, these are root based chords, so D, G, C, and you want to check your cycle of fifths symbol here to understand how that's working, but that's how it works. D resolves to G and G resolves to C, moves to C, and then it goes from there. Now, what I'm doing, and this particular exercise, I'm doing 2, 5, 1 in C. Then I stay on the C and make that a new 2, and I do a 2, 5, 1 into B flat. Then I make the B flat a new 2, and move into A flat, you see, so I'm, that's how I'm doing the cycle of fifths, and it's practical that way. So you have this, you have 1, 7, 1, 3, 1, 7, then I put the 1, 6, so that becomes a two measure figure, and you'll see, I have the score for this, you can download and follow this, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's making it practical, right? So. Now we add, you can add the, the two notes to the top, like and have this one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, like that. See, so you don't have to move much in the right hand. It just, that's all it is. That's as simple as it gets for spread voicing. Now to make it more interesting, I'm adding the ninth in there, so I'm having this. Now, it tells you it's a D minor 9. How do, how do I know that's a 9? Well, a 9 is one step above the octave. So, there's the octave and then one more would be, it's calling it a, a major second. It's, the, it's an octave above the second, so it's a, a ninth. And you see it's calling it a ninth there when it sees how it's voiced. So there you have the D minor 9 moving to to a G9. Now how do we know that's a 9? Well because you see there's that's one step above the octave. There's the octave. One step above would be 8. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's the dominant 7th of course so that, that, that 7 would be flatted. So we're moving from a minor 7 to a dominant 7th to a major 7th. That's the 2, 5, 1. So we have D minor 9, voice like that, and then just slight movement in the right hand and that maneuver in the left hand and then resolving here to C major 9 and then to C major 6. Now, the reason I'm doing it that way is because it's more melodic than other ways I could do it. This is melodic because you have this you have that, you have, that's kind of melodic. And now you can play it like this. You can arpeggiate the notes. And that's another way you can play it. That's interesting. So here, here we go through the cycle now. And some of these are going to be hard for me because I have... Uh, right hand Dupertunes contracture, my fingers are bent, so I can't really spread all of them it's too good in the right hand, but I'll, I'll arpeggiate them when I need to. So here you have this, 2, 5, 2, 5, 1 in C. Then I do make a new 2 on the C minor, C minor 9. That's hard for me. There it is. And then the F9 to the B flat major 9 to the B flat 6, then a new minor 9, whoops, that's a minor 9, B flat minor 9, E flat 9, A flat major 9, A flat major 6, then I make that a new 2, A flat minor 9, D flat 9, and this would be G flat or F sharp major 9, F sharp major 6, then F sharp minor 9, B9 to E major 9, to E major 6, then E minor 9, A9 to, to D major 9 to D major 6, 6-9. Six, so now we did a whole tone scale. We did we missed some. Two five ones. We just did the uh, 
D, you know, so we, we did um, a whole tone scale, like, um, like that. So now we have the other one, we have to go up a half step to do the other set. So it'll start on E flat minor, 9, see there's two whole tone scales, so we just did one whole tone scale system, so we missed some. We would have had to go chromatic, in other words, I would have had to go like this. to get all of them. So, because I was doing it in a more practical way, making the resolved chord a new two, I'm only playing through a whole tone scale. So I need to play through the other whole tone scale to get the rest of the two fives. You have to have 12 altogether. That was just six. That's the important thing to understand. You have to have 12 two five ones to cover all, all the possible ones that you you could you could play you know there's 12 keys you're going to play two five ones in every in every one of those 12 keys you got to know know all of all the possibilities so the same exact formula now applied to the other whole tone scale would be up a half step so it'd be e flat minor 9 to a, a flat 9 to d flat major 9 to, to d flat major 6 and and so on e flat minor 9 That'd be G flat or F sharp nine to B major nine to B major six. You know, so these go like this. You can vary it then. See so these are written out for you. You have to try to learn them from the score um, and then ideally don't use the score. Forget about the score and uh, just learn them by ear and by feel. Okay, so now that's the two five one but what about just the two fives? So that's another exercise and the two fives would be this D minor 9 G 9 and then I go to C but I'd make it a 2 like a, what is it telling me there? My problem is a, my hand. There. C minor 9 to F9. And then B flat minor 9 to E flat. You see? So I'm not resolving them. I'm just doing two fives. It doesn't register that because of my hand. There now. This is, so then the other one set would be. See, so you want to use the sheet to learn these and practice them and now apply them to your songs. So the spread voicing, I'm just showing you the 1713. You could reverse that and make it a 1317. What would that be? Now that would be, instead of the D minor being like that, 1713, it would be, you'd start on the 1-3 for the, for the 2 chord and you make a 1-7 for the 5 chord and then a 1-3 for the resolve chord, you'd have so you'd have you'd have this. You could and then you could put them, you know. Ideally, the one three should be a one ten, so it would be like this. See, or it'd be this. So then I'd have up here. I'd have. Let's do this here. See, but we're not going to do that in this video. I uh, just want to make you aware of it, that there's another system of 110. And to illustrate that, on Sunny Gets Blue, I'm going to use the 17 to the 13. Then on, on Don't Blame Me, I'm going to use the 110 to the 117. So, um, so Sunny Gets Blue is, would be this. Now you see there's the 17. I'm not adding the third, the fifth, and the ninth. And then I'm 
go into the one three here. Um, I don't always use that chord. I use, but I'm using it now for illustration. I usually use an A minor here, but I'm going to just use the chord to show you the example. Now up here, I go to the up to the B flat minor, and there it is, the minor nine right to the related to. Now there's the A minor seven to the you see one seven to one three B flat minor to E flat seven and then A flat minor so there it is you see there's your one seven one three so First one there, second one is here. Alright, and then, and then here it is again. And there it is again. And then the last one. You see, so I used it four times in just the first eight measures. I used that system of the of that particular spread voicing with the one seven one three combination between the two and the five in the left hand. Now when you get into the bridge, now I go to tenths, like um, just because it sounds better. I mean I you know the one seven one three doesn't sound as good on the bridge, but now on Don't Blame Me, I'm going to use the 110, 17, like Now what is that? Well it just means that I'm using a tenth there going to a seventh, a tenth on the minor seven chord going to a root and a seventh on the five chord. So, you know, I know this is a lot to take in, but I'm going to give you the sheet on it to practice as a drill. You can download it from my website. Um, I'll give you another video on this if you write to me and say do another one, slow it down or uh, whatever. But watch my video which has a link here which shows you how to slow the video down and how to stop it and repeat something that I said so that you get it. I did a video on that a few years ago explaining how to get the best out of my uh, information out of my videos and retain them by re having me repeat things by you know reversing the video to repeat a phrase or whatever or slowing it down and not having the pitch change so I have a video I did on the, that you want to watch and if you want to see another video on Don't Blame Me in which I play the tenths and the other system then write to me on that and I can do that one for you but use the drill to learn the exercise and now listen to me applying it. I'm going to play When Sunny Gets Blue for you, applying this, these principles. Of course, a lot of other things added in. But that basic spread voicing system through the cycle of fifths, once you practice that, you've learned one of the most important techniques you're going to ever use in playing popular and jazz music guaranteed. So write to me and we'll have a sign off now. Well here we go with the song and then we'll have a sign off. Okay.
Signing off from the Jazz Ranch. Thanks so much for joining me tonight here at the Jazz Ranch. And cowpokes and cowgals, please write to me anytime. I love to hear from you. I always answer all my comments if you give me enough time. And you know, Hermie Dressel's up there now. He's singing Home on the Range, but not like that. He's singing like, Home, Home on the Range, where the deer and the little play, where seldom is heard and you get the idea. Swing loose and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.